It's time again. The Karate Nerd returns to Okinawa to explore the history, origins, and secret techniques of traditional karate. You're watching Season 2 of Karate Nerd in Okinawa. Featuring your host, Jesse Yenkat, a.k.a. the Karate Nerd himself. Get ready for another epic journey to discover the untold story of Okinawa. The birthplace of karate. This is Karate Nerd in Okinawa. Season 2. Episode 3. Now we're gonna go to a very special place. The place where this whole Karate Nerd and Karate by Jesse thing started back in the days. Follow me. When I was 19 years old, I decided to move here to Okinawa to study the roots of this fascinating fighting art that I had been practicing my whole life. Living here by myself, not knowing the language, not knowing the people, really taught me a lot and made me grow up fast. I had to pay the bills in Japanese. I had to do my own laundry. I had to make my own food. You know, all of that stuff that a young man needs to become a grown up. That's exactly what Okinawa did to me. And I studied at university. I trained with different masters. And in the daytime, I would try to find different historical karate places. The kind of stuff that I've been showing to you in this video series. But the smartest thing I did was start a blog because I decided to share my observations and my experiences from living in the birthplace of karate. And it grew to the biggest karate blog in the world, Karate by Jesse, which led to everything else I've ever done since then. Imagine what you could do, just one thing that changes everything for the rest of your life. Can you see the balcony on the top right hand side where the clothes are hanging? I remember I used to sit up there and blog and then in the morning I would always do my own morning workout inside before I took my bike and went to the university. Now I know what you're thinking. Jesse-san, why the hell did you leave? Why, did, why are you not living in Okinawa still? And the reason is because you need to understand what kata really is. When I say kata, I don't mean the karate forms that we do. I mean a way of doing things that goes throughout the whole Japanese culture. There is a kata for everything. Whether it's how you eat your food, how you put on your clothes, how you greet somebody, how you enter a home. There is a kata for whatever you do in daily life. And if you don't know the kata, the correct way to do something, you will never fit in. And as a foreigner, if you're not born here, it's virtually impossible to understand the kata for everything you do in your life. And so I came to a point when I understood this, when I realized that either I'm gonna stay here for the rest of my life and try to fit in, or I just leave it all, take the lessons with me, go back home and grow in my own way, instead of trying to fit into the kata or the forms of society here. Because to me, it's enough with the kata we do in karate. I don't need my whole life to be about kata and how to fit in and do things a specific certain way. But I understand people who like this because you don't need to think. You just do it according to the kata. Even the way you pick up your chopsticks and eat your food has a specific formula, a kata. And to me, life is not a kata. It's more like kumite, if you know what I mean. Right now, I'm on my way to a private lesson to learn some Matayoshi Kobudo, which is one of the coolest Kobudo styles in Okinawa. And I'm hoping that you can learn something too. This master that I'm gonna be training with, his name is Gaja Sensei, and he's one of the most experienced Matayoshi Kobudo teachers on the island. He was actually a direct student of Matayoshi himself. I hope that I can have the opportunity to learn the three-sectional staff, the Sunset Tsukon because I have one of those in my dojo back home, but I don't know how to use it. But I'm pretty sure Gaja Sensei knows how, and maybe he can teach me. Let's see what happens, because I've never met him before.
Here, boom. Okay. Special weapon. Make strong. strong. Mm. Ah. So, so somebody kick you. Hey. Then. Ah. Hey. 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 What was supposed to be a short private lesson turned into like a three hour karate nerd deep dive into Matayoshi Kobudo. And I didn't even know this, but when Gaja Sensei gave me his business card after training, I found out he's a Hanshi ninth dan. That's like the highest level you can get and the highest rank unless you're like 85 years old and founder of your own style. But I got some bad news and some good news. The bad news is I didn't get to do the three-sectional staff because when I asked Gaia Sensei about the three-sectional staff he said that he thinks it's a stupid weapon that is just you know for demonstrations it's just flashy he doesn't think it's practical so he actually doesn't even practice with it because he said it's a higher chance that you're gonna hit yourself in the head than your opponent and the good news of course is that I got to do a lot of other cool stuff but what struck me as very fascinating was the very first thing I had to do, which was talk. He wanted to talk basically like an hour just to find out if my intentions were pure. He said that many Okinawan sensei think that there are three very important things in karate and kobudo. Shingi tai, your heart, your body and your technique. But in his opinion, it's shin shin shin. Gi Tai, heart, 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 body technique. Because he thinks that if you're not a good spirited person, you shouldn't learn karate because you could use it in evil ways, right? So he wanted to kind of uh, test my character and see if I was a good or bad person. And I think I passed the test because after that, he taught me so many cool things. We did the nunchaku, which he said that usually, back in the old days, he had to train from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., six days a week for 10 years before he was allowed to even learn the nunchaku or nunchucks as we say in English usually. Uh, but I got to learn it the first session with him and that was a pretty advanced kata actually. We did the bow, we did maybe four or five different bow kata and at one point he said, uh, how many years you know this kata? And I said, it's my first time. He was like, what? He, he couldn't believe it, but I've been learning Kobudo since I was a kid and just adapting and adjusting your techniques is not that difficult once you have a habit of always learning new things. And then I always did, uh, also did the Sai and one of the coolest techniques was when he asked me to throw the Sai on the ground as if I'm trying to pierce my opponent's foot and if you miss the foot you can actually impale the calf muscle instead. That was like uh, also acceptable. And then finally we did some conditioning. The makiwara and the, the kote, the wrist and the ude, the forearm, and all of these different parts of the body that you gotta make super strong if you wanna be, have a, an iron body. And he said that the most important thing whenever you do conditioning is to always count your reps because it will start hurting and you will wanna give up. But if you have a number to always aim for, if you have a goal, then that will help you kind of keep going and not give up. 
because you gotta be consistent and do your conditioning daily. Whether you're hitting a makiwara or hitting your forearms with a conditioning stick or whatever you do, you always gotta be consistent to get those results to build your iron body. And the best method, according to Gaja Sensei, was to always count your reps and try to reach that same number each and every time so you don't give up. And I think that was basically a summary of the most important points that I believe you should know from my first ever session in Matayoshi style Kobudo with Gaja Takehiro Sensei, 9th degree Hanshi Black Belt. All right, karate nerds, now it's time for a very special segment of this web show because I have a very special guest with me today. My name is Nicholas. And we're sitting here because I guess I was part of the program. The Okinawan Karate Nerd Program, OKNP. It's kind of a, an exchange program, a way for people outside of Okinawa to get to come here, practice with local masters, uh, get a job, uh, find an apartment, and kind of live the karate nerd lifestyle here at its birthplace. And you're from? I'm from Colombia. How long have you now been here in Okinawa? So last year when the program started, I was here for six months. I came back this year on January. What would you say have been the biggest surprises when you compare what you thought Okinawa would be like and then actually being here? When I came to Okinawa, I realized that Okinawa has a very unique culture. Yeah. And it's very different from mainland. And since they here are incredibly kind, incredibly open, and they're always willing to answer your questions and kind of like welcome you into their dojo. It's, it's very nice feeling, it's very much like a family and mm. less than it, what I thought it would be, mm. which was gonna be like very, you stand in line, everything has to be perfect yeah. and all the protocol wants to be very tight. Yes, and what do you think has been the biggest uh, gift that Okinawa has given you since coming here? It's just opened my mind so much. Had the opportunity to meet amazing people from all over the world that have mm. like share the same enthusiasm and like passion for karate. And that's, that's uh, sometimes I think it's very rare, especially for where I come from, people just do karate like a hobby. Always be respectful and open-minded. Mm. Do not come here to kind of like do your own thing, but to learn to receive. That's yes. what masters appreciate the most. Is mm. Oh, and lastly, you brought something to show. This is, a, this is a, calli a calligraphy by my sensei's wife. And it basically means, as I understand it, the way of the determined heart. Yes. And the Okinawan masters love to give sometimes these special kinds of gifts for special kinds of people. Absolutely, which, yeah. Which I believe all karate nerds are because they're open-minded, they're willing to learn and come here and uh, let go of their everyday life just to take a deep dive into the Okinawan karate and culture. And for that, I thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse, for and, this uh, opportunity. Yes, of course. And you know what? Let's head over to this part of the wall here in the dojo bar where a lot of other karate nerds from the program have actually signed their names. Let's go. Can you guys see that up here? All of the autographs from the different participants, people who applied and got selected to come here, live here, study, train hard, work hard, and enjoy the Okinawan karate nerd life. If you're a dedicated karate nerd and you want to come here and live the karate nerd life in Okinawa, then just go to my website and apply. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, but we gotta know that you're serious and dedicated and well-spoken, right? And then maybe you can get the chance to come here too and enjoy Okinawa. The Okinawans love steakhouses. Despite the fact that they eat a lot of vegetables, they also eat a lot of meat, especially steak. But if you want the best steak, don't go to the big commercial steakhouses like the one behind me, or that one over there, or that one over there. Because those are just for tourists. The locals go to that one over there that you can barely see. Let's go there. Damn, it's closed. I promise you guys, this is a really good, in fact, it's ranked the best. It's the number one among the locals in all of Okinawa. I'll just have to take you to this place in another episode, all right? Let's go somewhere else. I have no idea what happened, but here we are and I'm waiting for a pizza. I guess you just gotta be flexible, you know? Both in your body and in your diet. Cheers. <laughs> mm. 
Japanese language lesson. If you're eating something and you think it's really good, then you should say oishikatta in Japanese because that, because that means it was very delicious. And they always love that. Let's see, let's look at his reaction when I tell him oishikatta. Oishikatta desu. I can't lie, that was the best pizza I've ever had, including in Italy. See you guys in the next episode.